and welcome to the Bric-a-Brac shop. And thanks for joining me. Now, over the last few weeks, I've spoken about a few uh, toys, a few uh, possessed toys. I've spoken about the most haunted house in London. And now I'm going to tell you about Green Park, one of the royal parks in London. Now, if you've been watching our videos, if you like this, do press the like button and subscribe and also um, click the bell as well. So you get notified every time I bring out a new video. So I'm going to tell you about Green Park. Now, Green Park is situated in between uh, Mayfair, Piccadilly, Buckingham Palace, St. James's Park, and uh, over a hundred years ago, all of that area was the countryside. It was um, actually the royal hunting grounds for the king. And uh, now the first recorded history of uh, Green Park was back in 1554, and that was with the rebellion of Queen Mary I. Now back then, Green Park was, uh, was actually known as uh, Upper St. James's Park, and it was actually the royal hunting grounds of the king. In fact, uh, close by to Green Park, actually where St. James's Palace is today, it's where the leper hospital used to be. The leper hospital of St. James the Lesser. It was founded back in 1189. And King Henry VIII, he demolished the hospital to build a palace for him and his second wife, Anne Boleyn. However, when it was completed in about 1536, Anne Boleyn didn't really get to stay there because that's she when was she was executed. executed. However, Green Park was where they used to bury the, the patients when they died from leprosy. They'd be buried in Green Park, which is one of the reasons why no one unearths the ground in Green Park, because they don't want to disturb the graves there and maybe release the, uh, the leprosy disease. Now, in 1668, that's when King Charles II renamed it Green Park from uh, Upper St. James's Park. And you won't find any flowers growing in Green Park, mainly because they don't want to disturb the, uh, the graves of the leprosy patients there and maybe cause the disease to be relaunched again. But also, there was a legend that uh, his wife, Catherine of Briganza from Portugal, she declared that there'll be no formal flower beds in Green Park. Now, the story goes that Charles II was walking in the park and he picked up a flower and he said, I will give this to the most beautiful girl in this park. And he turned around and he gave it to a young girl beside him. And that's when the queen decided to say, there'll be no more flower beds in Green Park. And that's why today there are no formal flower beds. But basically, we think that uh, mainly it's because they don't want to disturb the graves. Now, Green Park, don't forget, was the open countryside back then. And it's also where uh, robbers and thieves used to live. And they'd be able to um, hijack the, uh, the coaches driving through to the west. And um, I'm just looking at my, my notes because there is uh, so much on Green Park. And um, you'll find Green Park full of uh, different ghosts. In fact, uh, a lot of duels used to take place in Green Park. Apparently, one duel that took place on the 11th of January in 1696 was uh, between Sir Henry Colt and uh, Robert Bow Fielding. And they were dueling over um, the Duchess of Cleveland. I don't know why they didn't ask her who she wanted to be with, but uh, they decided to um, fight it out themselves. So they had a duel there. Now, Sir Henry Colt, he was injured in the duel and survived. But the sounds that uh, created from that duel apparently used to be heard around that park for centuries. Now, Green Park, if you go there today, is quite a nice, pleasant park with greenery and it's lovely in summertime and you can um, lie on the deck chairs or even lie on the grass and have picnics there. But on the paranormal side, it can be quite different. 
Apparently, there's a park bench there, which they say they've actually taken away or uh, they don't know where it is. But um, just be careful who you sit next to on the park bench because there's supposed to be a crazy old man there trying to cut his throat. And people have seen him in the park. Now, we don't know why he's doing that. Maybe that's what he did once upon a time and um, he's still doing it now. Another ghost that you may find uh, walking around in Green Park is the uh, dancer. Apparently he's dressed in dancing attire. Now we're talking about the early 1900s, so the uh, a black suit and tails basically, and dancing shoes, so nice black shoes. And apparently he's supposed to be seen walking around Green Park as well. And Green Park has a few trees, as you would know. Very nice place in the daytime, and especially in summer, people have picnics and they lie on the grass, even in the deck chairs, and absorb the lovely sunshine. But uh, on the paranormal side, it's a different story. Like, there are quite a few different trees there, and one of the trees is the death tree. Now, uh, which tree is the death tree? has been lost through the ages. No one actually knows which one it is. But uh, apparently people say that um, people can hear um, grunts, growls, groans, and low cunning laughter coming from the trees. And also people have seen shadows and, uh, and uh, ghosts walking around that tree. And, per and birds don't even perch in that tree anymore and people have known to wander there and commit suicide. They say touching the tree will bring misfortune and also um, vandalizing it will result in a curse, so just be careful. Apparently um, lots of people will um, fall asleep there and never wake up. In fact, uh, there's the uh, story of the fiddler. Now he used to bask and, and, and play his fiddle for money and uh, one evening he decided to take a nap so he had a, a, a nap under the tree and when he woke up someone had stolen his fiddle. He looked around and inquired everywhere and uh, tried to find it but he couldn't find it and in the end he ended up hanging himself in the tree. Noted that some people will still be able to hear him playing his fiddle. Just looking at my notes and then we have another tree and that is uh, the pig tree. Now this is where you'll find an ugly woman. And apparently uh, she's got the head of a pig and uh, the, the snout of a wolf. And she will devour men. She'll kill them. And if you're a woman, you're fine. They'll just make you feel like um, you hate and you dread men if you're in that area. Apparently it's a bit like the equivalent of uh, a shurrel. Now shurrels are... Um, uh, the spirits of women that died in pregnancy. They come back and attack men. Women, again, are fine. And in some stories, they actually appear as a beautiful woman and lure the men into the woods, and that's where they kill them. And a lot of cultures have uh, this sort of spirit. Uh, called a show in places like Malaysia, they're called uh, Pontianax. So uh, that's the pig tree. So just be careful if you see a woman near the tree there. And then we come to the circle of 13. 13 trees in a circle. Now no one remembers when they were actually planted there, but they were planted over a hundred years ago, maybe in the um, late 1800s. And they're plain trees and there's 13 of them and uh, they're planted on the east side of Green Park. Now uh, they've actually built a bandstand there from 1906 to 1980, but uh, the bandstand is gone there. But you can still see the 13 trees in a circle. And uh, they say there's magical qualities there because um, according to uh, Chris Street, uh, he's, an, he's an author and a mystic and a visionary, and he says um, there are energy lines or earth star grids that actually pass through Green Park and they pass adjacent to the circle of 13. And uh, energy lines, they're a bit like the electromagnetic lines that uh, um, circle the Earth. And he says, where the energy lines cross, and that's in Green Park, they can lead to um, 
portals, vortexes, and even dimensional doorways to other worlds. It's a bit like um, the, uh, the ancient gateways and energy sources. And that's why they think they planted the 13 trees there as, um, as an energy source. A bit like um, Stonehenge as well. And apparently, if you look to the east, the northeast, apparently you sh in the old days you used to be able to see the sun rise between two of the trees there. So that was planted back in the late 1800s. Why don't you go and have a look and see what you think. See if you can pick up any magical, mystical energies there. What do you think? Have you had any strange experiences in Green Park? Or were these just stories made up to keep people away from Green Park at night? Because don't forget, in the past, when there was beggars and uh, homeless people around, they used to sleep in Green Park. And do you think they were just making up these stories so people wouldn't sleep uh, in Green Park? And where's the death tree? No one actually knows now. So probably to scare people from sleeping under any old tree. What do you think? Do you think these are stories that have been made up or there's some truth to them? Well, write your comments below and let me know. And again, if you've liked this video, click the like button below. And also subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and click the bell so you'll be notified when I release another video. So thanks for watching. I'd like to hear your comments. Let me know what you think. And um, just be careful where you go and your surroundings and be aware of what you pick up. And until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you then.